I'm glad you're here. We're going to share this project, basically a little bit about this project. Um, this was a 10 day lesson that was developed for summer school that we're going to be running for kinder first and second grade this uh, starting next week, actually, we're getting all of our supplies in as we speak. So we're going to be packing up some kits in just a bit. But the idea was to get uh, our students to, you know, can, animals are really popular. Like who, who doesn't love animals? So it's just a fun project to get students to think about animals, their bodies, their behavior, um, their habitats, things like that. And then to be able to do something fun and creative with this information so getting them some research skills a little bit as well so as you can see right now i thought it'd be fun and exciting to have you all take a look at some a live camera from the san diego zoo i did not anticipate that the rhinoceroses would be asleep right now but it totally makes sense i feel like it's that time of day when you just want to find the shade shady cool spot and take a nap so i think that they have the right idea what other things are y'all noticing about their habitat? Habitat meaning their surrounding, right? Where they live. What do y'all notice about their physical traits, meaning their body? What do y'all notice about their behavior? Feel free to share through the chat or unmute yourself. There's only three of us in here, so have at it. The habitat is grassy and sandy. Yep. Do you think that, that that habitat looks similar to San Antonio a little bit? No. <laughs> Different. Yeah. There's sand out there. We don't have any. Yeah, so that, that's a weird combination of sand and grass, right? <clears throat> yeah. And so the only place we would see these animals would be in a zoo here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the to new participants that just joined in. So today we are taking a look at our, right now we have our uh, rhinoceros camera up from the San Diego Zoo. For those of you that just joined in, I want y'all to share real quick uh, something you're noticing about their physical trait, their body, the environment, their habitat, or something about their behavior. What are y'all noticing? And feel free to, to unmute yourself. We, it's a small group of us, so no, no need to be shy or anything like that. Or they're under the tree in a group uh, trying to rest under the shade. So that must be the only shaded area because everything else has no trees, looks like. Yeah, so somehow they're smart enough to know, hey, this is like the cooler spot to be at right now. Mm -hmm. Except for the one, the one in the back, he's, he's up to something. I don't know what. Maybe he needs a little snack first before he takes his nap. That's what I'm, that's what I'm going to go with. All right. We'll, we'll come, maybe we'll have time to come back and check on them in a second here. I'm going to close out the chat for just a little bit. That way I can see more of my screen. Um, so we're looking at this project here. I'm calling it creative safari. Essentially it's a project for kinder first and second. It was designed for our summer school kiddos. They're going to be coming in next week. Um, let's start by the most important question of the day. I want you to tell me, in the chat or on the mic, either one, what is your favorite animal and why? This is a very important question here. Do you mean like at the zoo or in general? In general, in general, the animal that you're like, this is who I connect with yeah, I just on my soul know. level. This is my spirit so animal. This is who I was in a previous life. I would say dogs because dogs are very loyal to you. <laughs> okay. And especially my dogs. Danielle says you like love dragons. I like your thinking. And why dragons? What is it about dragons? Oh, hey, Ernest. Hey. Um, I love I love dragons because um, my family has a martial arts background, and it's just something that that I have always grown up with, like 
um, little dragon figurines and, and jewelry and um, different things that connected to the martial arts. Okay. I was going to say that there was something about the fierceness of a dragon too. And I thought that maybe that was, I was going to guess that that was why you were connected to them, but it's more about almost like nostalgia and family connection to you for you. Right. Very good. Okay. All right. Well, y'all, y'all think about it. The rest of y'all keep thinking it's hard to narrow it down. Um, Miss Juanita says a sloth. All right. They're pretty cute, pretty cute. There's some sloths at our zoo here. Um, so I, I told you a little bit about this project. What we're gonna do today is we're going to research an animal and then I want y'all's help in creating an ebook today. We probably won't have tons and tons of time to build out the most elaborate ebook, but that's okay. We're gonna be doing this on an app called Pages, which is on iPads. And I think if y'all attended some of the sessions or one of the sessions earlier this morning with Celeste, she was showing you how to do some stuff with pages. So some of the stuff you may see will be like a good uh, reminder again. But the nice thing about this is that this presentation focuses on this project, which is actually meant to be a 10 day project. And the cool thing is that I'll be able to share with you the, the slides that you can share with your students. As, as well as a 10 day lesson plan that you'll be able to use too. All right, <clears throat> so now you know about this project. These are the things we're gonna, we're gonna talk about today. Number one, how is it that we can get our students to do some research? Now, if you're in SAISD like us, that means that you have access to something called ClassLink. And ClassLink for us in SAISD has some of our digital resources. Um, I'm assuming probably that if those of you outside of our district also have something similar as well. So the other tasks that we'll do is how to how do I start a pages project? How do I add different items into my pages project? And then how do I share it out at the very end? So let's talk about our first objective of the day, which is how do we learn more about our animal? Based on what y'all said, it looks like we have some monkeys here because they're free-spirited and clever. We have sloth, dragons. Okay, so I'm keeping this in mind so we can research some of your favorite animals today. Now, when your students are using iPads, because in, in SEISD, kinder, first and second grade generally have iPads like 90% if I'm just coming up with a, a number right now in my mind. Most of our kinder for seconds have iPads. On your iPads, you have an app called ClassLink. And inside of that ClassLink, you'll find a folder called Library Databases. The one that we have been recommending for students to do some beginner research level in elementary is called Britannica, as you can see here. I'm gonna go ahead and sign into that now. Unfortunately, my iPad was acting up so I'll just do this on my, my laptop here while, um, so give me a second here. While I'm signing in for um, Juanita, you said that you were in South San. Do you have uh, some kind of tech tool that holds all of your resources as well? Um, I believe the kids do, they use um, Clever, I believe, but okay. I don't have access to that as a librarian. So I just, um, they have the resources on a, on a student resources page from the main website. So I just go from there. Okay. And did any, any of our other guests join in from outside of the district? Yes, I'm from Short Cibolo. Hi. Uh, what kind of tool do y'all have uh, all of your resources inside of? We use ClassLink as well. ClassLink, okay. Mm -hmm. So within our ClassLink, I, we have ours organized into, as you can see here, there's my folder library databases. Um, and we have Britannica here. So I'm assuming, I, I feel like Britannica is probably something a lot of the schools have access to in case you... Um, or outside of SEISD, but I love that it's broken down into elementary, middle, and high to give us an appropriate reading level. 
And once our kids get in here, of course, they could do a search up here. This is probably better for second grade. If they scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see a section called Animal Kingdom. So we have our amphibians, birds, extinct animals, which I think that's a cool category, fish, insects, mammals, mollusks, mollusks, and other sea animals. Now, it's, it sounded like y'all were more drawn, drawn towards the mammals based on what y'all said, sloth and monkey. So let's take a look at what we can find in here. I'm looking for what I see for a sloth or monkey. Ooh. No, no. Well, let's do a search. Let's try a search for sloth and see what comes up. We've got images, videos. It looks like it doesn't give us a lot of information about it. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So this resource has some, some basic information for us to start with about sloth. Um, just to point out a couple of key things, a lot of these databases that are provided to us for, um, for us to use, they do come with these extra tools that make it just a little bit easier for our students to use. For example, a lot of them have a feature that'll read the text aloud. So let's try that. Sloths are slow moving mammals that spend most of their lives in trees. They so if a student's not at the age yet where they can read independently, they do have the option to play it aloud and listen to it. Another thing that's really uh, helpful is that we have the option to translate as well. So that little globe right here, clicking that, lets us switch the language that we want to select. So switch to Spanish. And then I believe it still sounds pretty good when I play this. Los Perezosos Ooh. San Mamiferos de Movimiento. Not quite, not the best, but it does have the, the uh, translation there feature, which could be really helpful. Up at the very top, there's the ability to still switch reading levels. So if any of you are working with third, fourth, fifth grade students, or even middle school students, um, you still have the ability to bump up the text. Or if you, the opposite is true, right? Maybe if you're working with some older students and you still have some of them at um, um a slightly different, uh, not their, their grade level, the reading grade level is not on par where it should be. You can always uh, simplify the text just a little bit too. Okay. So that is Britannica. I'm gonna go bump back into my, my presentation here. So that would be step one of this project. You, you spend some time talking to the kiddos about behavior, their habitat, their, um, their body, the physical traits, you get them to understand those concepts, you have them go and research their animals. There's all the information about Britannica. So now let's get into, okay, I have some ideas about what I want to include in my project as I put together my ebook. So let me go ahead and switch over to my iPad. Give me just one second while I switch over. And then just give me a thumbs up real quick if you can see my iPad. Yep. Got it, okay, good, thank you. Okay, so this app, as you can see right here, it's called Pages. I just put in a request, if you're in SAISD, I put in a request to have this automatically installed onto all the iPads throughout our district. So I know that they're working on that. If they have not pushed it out or for, for whatever reason they say no, which is possible, I don't know, I want y'all to just remember that we always have this icon right here called the app portal. You can go into the app portal and you're more than welcome to download the apps that you need from here. I do recommend that you identify a student or two to be your tech leader for your classroom because you're going to have some of those kids that understand already how to use tech, how to go in there and to install things. And so it'll be just a really nice to have a helper in the classroom that can go in and help other kids install an app if you need to. So we have, um, by the way, pages is in here. Um, 
there it is. So right here, you would click pages. Trust me, I'm pressing it right now. So you'll have to take my word for it. When it comes up, it'll give you a button that says install. And so you'll be able to install pages. And by the way, it doesn't happen super duper instantly. It takes, um, I've seen it take like 30 seconds or, or even 60 seconds to, to come up sometimes. All right, I'm gonna close that out. So let's take a look at opening pages. This is what it looks like when you open pages. And I think that this would be something good to model with your kids or to help them, to guide them along just to get started on it. You'll notice that the plus sign right here says create document. So you can press that to launch a new project. And as you start a project, it wants to know, are there any uh, templates that you want to start with? There's a bunch of templates to choose from. In fact, if any of you are have been thinking about publishing your own book, you could do that using this tool pages. You can write it beginning to end inside of this app and even publish it to the Apple bookstore. So just, you know, in case you're thinking of uh, something to do this summer. All right, so um, one of the templates that we're recommending here is this one that you see right here called Story. It's just very kid-friendly and uh, fun to look at. Okay, so one of the first things we wanna talk about is just making sure you and your students would know how to delete a slide and to add a slide into your project. So let's take a look on the left-hand side you will notice that I have four pages in my book already. Let's take a look. I just have to tap on each one to display. This is what my page two looks like. This is what my page three looks like. And this is what my fourth page looks like right now. And of course my cover. All right, so let's just say for an example, um, page number four, I realize I don't want this page there. I want to delete it. So you'll notice that page four is already highlighted. There's an orange rectangle around it. If I tap on page four one more time, then you'll see the option for cut, copy, and delete. So there's the word delete. And now I've taken page four out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete page two and three also. So tap, delete, tap, Delete. Now I'm down to just my cover. And I'm thinking right now, okay, I wanna insert a page because this is where I wanna start my project here. So you'll notice that in the bottom left-hand corner over here, there's your plus sign. And it gives me a variety of pages, page types to choose from. So I think I'm gonna do one called about the author. I feel like that would be a fun page to include into y'all's kids' books, right? Like a page where the, right, the student gets to talk about themselves. So that was one of our objectives right there. How do I open pages? How to, do I delete a page? And how do I add a page? I wanna pause there real quick to make sure y'all are feeling good so far about everything that you've seen. So far, so good. Okay. So the next step, the next step is that we want to take a look at how we would work with text. Okay. Now, Ms. Ms. Danielle, I know you work with your kinder students and you do a lot of fun and creative projects. Can you give us an idea in the group about where kindergarten students are at as far as being able to, can they type a word? Where, where, give me some reality here. Where are they at when it comes to their, their vocabulary typing, being able to do that type of work? As far as uh, typing words and sentences, that's more gonna happen in second semester uh, for the kindergarten classroom. Right, right after we get back from Christmas break. Um, so in the beginning, we're still, we're still 
working on our letters and our sounds and we're more labeling we're we're more labeling mom with an m and dad with a d and um so that's where we're at in kindergarten as far as typing okay so let, let me uh, based on what you said let me try doing some of that um, I think that, you know, when I'm working with kinder for a second, I'd probably teach them the concept of how in, in this program, anytime you see a plus sign, it means that you're going to put something onto your project. You're going to add something onto it, right? And thank you for sharing, by the way. I appreciate that. So I would get my students to say, you know what? You want to add something. You want to add words. You want to add a letter. You want to add a picture. It's the plus sign, right? So when I do that, you'll notice that there's a couple of different options in there. We're going to talk about these, but first I want to really focus in on this one. That's a shape because inside of shape, you have one in here called text. So I can click on text and the students will be able to move the text exactly wherever they want to put it. Now, if you said second semester, they're typing, so maybe I am going to type my name. Maybe that'll be good practice to start with. Type my name. Okay, so that's exactly how you can add some text onto this. It's the plus sign. You see the option for text and you can do that. Okay, so here's some other options. Some other options are, let me click inside my text box and let me try it this way iPads, whenever the keyboard comes up, you notice that there's a microphone here. So there is the option to try to record speech to text. This could be just a, a nice little skill to teach your students. So let me give it a shot here. Hello, my name is Ernest, and I am going to write a book about sloths, period. Okay, so um, this could be a good option for you all to try. Um, if you have students that are a little bit more verbal and you wanna practice those verbal skills, um, trying the speech to text could be a really nice way to get some text into your books. Now, if you have students that do get advanced with, with typing either a letter or a word or, or even a partial sentence, you might be thinking, how do I change those letters? In, in this program, in pages, you have a paintbrush up here and that's gonna be your icon that represents how something looks. The color, the size, for text and shapes, everything. The paintbrush affects, it's the formatting, right? So let me click on my text and let me click the paintbrush. And there you go, you can see that I'm, there's a, a paragraph style. Let's try heading and see what it looks like. That looks like a really simple way for students to be able to change their text, just off that style right there. Here's my color. I actually really like that color, but let me try green. I feel like green goes better with a zoo theme. I think probably just starting at that level, showing the students how to do the, the style and the color would be huge right there. Just those two things. So now you know how to add some text and change the formatting of text. I want y'all to guess how I delete my text. Someone make a prediction on how you can delete some text, either in chat or through mic. Okay, I'm going to tap it. All right. Do you see it? It's, it's very similar to the slides. The same exact thing. As soon as you tap it, that menu comes up across the top that'll let you copy it, cut it, delete. There's also speak sentence in there. There's also that option there. Um, so let me just go ahead and delete. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna try speak sentence real quick just to hear what that sounds like. Well, I didn't hear it speak it. That's okay. We'll come back to that later. Okay. Let's do a quick check-in and see how y'all are doing. So far, so good again. We know how to open pages. We know how to delete a page and add a page. And we've just completed our second piece, which is adding text and changing the text, formatting the text. We're going to go on to our, our next step, which is how do I add media? Now, I say the word media because there's different types of things that can be added onto your book. It doesn't have to be just a picture. It could be a video. It could be a drawing. It could be a variety of things. So let me go ahead and because this doesn't look like me, I'm going to click this picture and hit delete. It also works just like slides and text where I click it and I look for the word delete. When I want to add something, y'all remind me, where do I go to add? something to my page. The plus? The plus sign, you got it. Think of plus and think of the word add. We're gonna add something to our design. Now I've shown you the first part, which is text here. I'm gonna um, go over to the little picture icon here. I would want my students to, to learn right away that when they see something like that, that means it's a picture. So let's click that. And um, I was just in a session earlier today with a, a representative from Apple and they were talking about how this is really helpful too, where not only does it just say photo and video, but it gives you an icon over here to help with students to uh, associate what this, this is exactly, right? Just a little visual cue. So um, just from right here, I can add a photo or a video. I can open the camera. I can record audio. And then there's a few other things there. So let's start with just, uh, let's, let's do camera. Let me see if I can take a picture. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but let's, let's give it a shot. Wait, where's the camera? There we are. All right, so I'm gonna hit use photo. There we go. So now we have our, our about the author page. Very, very easy. Let me see if you can think of a different way to use the camera from what I did. So in my example here, I just pressed the plus sign I pressed camera and I took a picture of myself. What other types of things could y'all take pictures of for your project? Let's see what y'all can come up with. What are y'all thinking of? Okay, so you're thinking maybe the students can go out and, and actually try to take some real pictures of animals. I love that idea. If you could take a field trip to the zoo, that would be fantastic. Do, do uh, the students get to take their devices home by chance in your district? No? Okay. What else? What else can they take? Think, let's think inside the classroom too. What else can they take pictures of? Perfect. I love that idea. Tell me more what you're thinking of models. Well, what do you mean by models? So you're imagining the students have physical materials and they're going to sculpt out of Play-Doh an actual sloth and then take a picture of it. I love the idea. Love it. I'm a super duper big fan of blending physical and digital. Ms. Cavazos is saying stuffed animals, Lego animals, draw their own animal. Now you got it. You got it. So in getting students, you know, when we're, when we're making a digital book like this, I think sometimes there's a concern that teachers, um, and it, this is a 
very real concern um, that students don't get to practice, you know, their physical, their handwriting, all the, the motor skills, right? Let's, let's bring that together. Let's blend the two. The students can still draw animals. The students can sculpt, like you said. The students can even write, practice writing on paper. And using the camera, we can get them to take a picture of it. What about um, when I press plus sign and I say camera, but this time I switch to video? Right. So we can bring a, we can record video into our project. So what are y'all thinking that how that can be used for your book? Animals could narrate. Oh, go ahead. What would you say? I was reading though what Ms. Cavazos wrote. She wrote animal motions and sounds. That's so creative. I love that idea. Yes. I, I'm Ms. Cavazos. I'm going to have to borrow that idea. Actually, uh, we're doing some training for our teachers uh, Thursday to show them this project, and I'm totally going to make them do this now. They're going to have to act it out and put it into their book. What were you going to say? I was just going to say to narrate their story. Yeah, they could totally record themselves narrating the story. I think that's a really good idea. I was imagining too, maybe even some interviews, if you wanted the students to talk to each other and say, you know, um, why did you pick the sloth? What do you think the word sloth means? Why did they name it that? Uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. So the video can go in there. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out real quick is that we have the option that says record audio. So I'll make a click that there and uh, just notice the little record button down there at the bottom. Hi, my name is Ernest and I wrote a book about the sloth. I think that this is a really interesting animal and I hope that you think so too. So I, I clicked stop and I, there's my insert up at the corner. And I'll put my little button there. So now anybody looking at my book can click on it and, and listen to me. So this is really good practice too with, um, you know, maybe they're explaining what they're seeing on the page. Maybe you're just getting them to talk about their animal. Maybe the, you, we have them record the sounds there. Um, I'm sure y'all can probably think of some really amazing ideas of what to do with the audio. Okay, so now we know how to do that. Let's do one more thing inside of the plus sign because the plus sign is really my favorite part of this, uh, adding all of the fun audio and visual stuff. So I'm gonna press the plus sign one more time. And this time, by the way, you can do a digital drawing. You can do drawing and then it gives you all of these fun tools at the bottom. So that is possible. But right now I want to do this shape one. Remember this one from earlier when I said, hey, that's where the text is at. If you scroll over, you're going to see a section of animals. So it would be possible for you to create a whole, either just like a drawing of an animal as part of it, or your illustration, right? Or you could even draw a whole scene. Like check this out, just to give you an idea. Let's start with a rectangle. Okay, let's do... Ooh, that's a cool tree. All right. 
And let's do an animal. I don't know if we're going to find a sloth in here. I'm going to choose this guy for now, even though that's not a sloth. I mean, I could maybe convince my teacher that it was. So I'm building out, I could build out a whole scene. And then let me, let me ask you all this right now, everything's all one color. I used the plus sign to add in my shapes and pictures and things. What was the icon that I told you was all about changing the format? Format would be size, color, all of those things. I want to, I want my tree to be a different color. So where would, where, what would I do? Click the tree first and then what? Go to the paintbrush. You got it. Go to the paintbrush. Whoops. Let's try it. There. Let's see. Mm. Let's try that green. I don't know. Let's do orange. And then click my monkey again. And let's do the monkey yellow. Let's try that. Yeah, it's looking okay. I kind of feel like a digital Bob Ross right now. All right. Let, let me pause there and see how you're feeling about what you've learned so far. This section was the plus sign and how we can bring in media. We learned about being able to bring in a picture that we've already saved or take a picture, record video, record sound. We've learned about doing drawings. Then we've learned about shapes. Any questions so far about those parts? Okay. So let's see, the, the last thing to share with you is how to share your project, right? Because you're, you're probably wanna, you're gonna want to collect these in one place. You're gonna want to show the parents. You're gonna want to put them into a place where maybe other kids can read these books. So this is what I would do if I were in your place and you were like, all right, the books are finished. The kids are ready to share them out with a real audience. When you click, the word document in the top left, it shows you all of your, your, your books that are saved on this project, right? Or on this iPad. And this is the one I was just working on right here. So I'm going to tap and hold it. And you will notice that there's the word share right here. Inside of share, what I recommend is that you export it because right now what it saves as is a pages project. And that would mean that you need an iPad to open a pages project. Project. We want to export it into something else that other people can see, maybe if they weren't on an iPad, if they were just on a, on a phone, let's say. So export does that, that's what that means. It means we're gonna change it into something else, some other kind of format. So the ones that I would recommend, PDF, and EPUB, PDF you're probably familiar with. Now the downside of PDF is you, pro I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna lose video and audio. EPUB though, EPUB is actually a type of uh, electronic book, basically. It's the, a common ebook format. These can have audio and video in them. So I would recommend you save it as an EPUB. You put your settings in there that you want. And when you click export, it's going to still let you say, ask you, where do you want to put this EPUB? So some of the most convenient things I would think is saving it to your Google Drive, saving it to your Seesaw portfolio, in SEISD, kinder, first and second grade, you Seesaw. And then finally, you could airdrop it. So within our district, unfortunately, students do not have access to airdrop. But for those of you outside of SEISD, you might be able to airdrop from your student iPad onto the teacher iPad. 
and that would be another way to collect all of the projects together. Is this something that you would want to see again, these steps? By the way, all of this stuff that I'm showing you right now is in the slide deck that I'm, I'm going to share with you before y'all take off today too. Okay. Y'all feel, let's see what the chat says. Okay. I was wondering if we have access to the recordings. Yes. So um, I would say the majority of the sessions are being recorded and we'll, we'll send these out to you as well. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing my iPad. And I'm going to go back to the slide deck here. Okay, so we covered a lot of good stuff today revolving around how to um, use pages. Are there questions at this point? Let me get this um, link for you so I can share that with you. Okay, let me check the chat and see what kind of questions we've got. Nope, so far so good, okay. So the link I just put in the chat for you is this slide deck, which talks about how you do all of this work in, in um, pages. But the really nice thing is on slide 25, this takes you to the, the lesson. It's a slide deck for the students to use. So you can just project that and it, it covers your whole 10 day project. And then the link underneath it that says 10 day overview this is the lesson plan that you can use that was written for Kinder for a second. Uh, and it's a PBL type of, of format. But the nice thing is that uh, it'll, it'll give you like small steps of here's what to do day one, day two, day three. And then as you scroll down on this, it'll, it'll give you like more detailed day by day instructions for the teacher. All righty, I'm going to leave y'all with my email address. In case y'all have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I also want to uh, thank you all so much for attending this session.